So we are on to the CloudFormation Cheat Sheet. This is a long one, it's like three pages long. Uh, super important for the SysOps and Developer Associates, so we need to know this inside and out. So let's get into it. When being asked to automate the provisioning of resources, think CloudFormation. When infrastructure as code is, is mentioned, think CloudFormation. CloudFormation can be written in either JSON or YAML. When CloudFormation encourages, uh, encounters an error, it will roll back with rollback in progress. CloudFormation templates larger than 51,200 51, bytes or 0 0.5 megabytes are too large to upload directly and must be imported into CloudFormation via an S3 bucket. Nested stacks help you break up CloudFormation templates into smaller reusable templates that could be composed into larger templates. At least one resource under resources uh, must be defined for a CloudFormation template to be valid. And I'm gonna repeat that because it's so darn important in a second here. And let's talk about the, the template sections. And you definitely need to know these for the exam because they'll give you questions that you have to pick out which section does what. So we have metadata that, uh, that um, is extra information about your template, the description that tells you what your template does. You have parameters. This is how you get uh, user input into the template. Transform applies macros. This is like applying a mod which can change the, the anatomy uh, to be custom. And uh, a good example of that is SAM, the serverless application model. I think that's what it stands for. Then you have outputs. Uh, uh, these are values you can use to import into other stacks. You have mappings. These map keys to values, just like a lookup table. Resources, define the resources you want to provision. And here, I'm going to repeat it again. At least one resource is required. Conditions are whether resources are created or properties are assigned. Uh, and those are all the properties. So again, make sure you know, or the sections, make sure you know them inside and out because it'll earn you a few points on the exam. On to the second page, stack updates. Uh, it can be performed two different ways. We have direct updates. And so the way those work, you directly update the stack, you submit changes, and AWS CloudFormation immediately deploys them. This is what you're gonna be used to doing when you're using CloudFormation. Then the other way is executing change sets. So you can preview the change set to CloudFormation, or sorry, you can preview the changes to CloudFormation uh, will make to your stack, and that is what we call a change set. It's just telling you what's going to change then decide whether you want to apply those changes. So it's just like a review process. And then stack updates will change the state of your resources based on circumstances. So we have a few, we need to know them. So update with no interruption. So updates the resources without disrupting operation and without changing the resources physical ID. Then you have updates with some interruptions. Updates the resources with a uh, resource with some interruption and retains the physical ID. Replacement, recreates the resource during an update, also generates a new physical ID. Uh, you can use a stack policy to prevent stack updates on, on resources to prevent data loss or, or interruption to ser uh, services. We have drift detection. This is a feature that lets CloudFormation tell you when your expected configuration has changed due, uh, due to manual override. A, an example of this, let's say you have a CloudFormation template or a stack that creates a security group and a bunch of other resources. A, de a developer comes in and deletes that SG. So uh, CloudFormation would think that it's still there, even though it's not, and drift detection, if you turn that feature on, is gonna tell you that something, uh, that it's, it's no longer the case. And then onto the last page, and this is a long one. Uh, we're gonna talk about rollback. So occurs when a CloudFormation encounters an error when you create an update or destroy a stack. Uh, when a rollback is in progress, you'll see rollback in progress. When a rollback succeeds, you'll see update rollback complete. When a rollback fails, you'll see update rollback failed. Then you have pseudo parameters, our defined parameters. So here we have a ref AWS region, which would return US East one. So these are like AWS predefined parameters. Then we have resource attributes. Um, so resource attributes, we have a lot of different policies under here. We have creation policy prevents its status from reaching create complete until AWS CloudFormation receives a specified number of success signals or the timeout period is ex uh, exceeded. Deletion policy reserve, or in some cases backup a resource when its stack is deleted, retain, or snapshot. Update policy, how to handle an update for an ASG, Elastic Cache Domain, or Lambda alias. An update replace policy to retain, or in some cases, back up the existing physical instance for resource when it's replaced during a stack update operation. So we have delete, retain, or snapshot. And then we have depends on. The resource is created only after the creation of resource specified in the depends on attribute. And there's some cases where you use depends on, there's an, there's a other case where you use um, a wait condition. Um, so we have intrinsic functions, allow you to assign properties that are not available during runtime. Most important uh, two to know would be the ref one, returns the values of a specified parameter or resource, 
get a trib returns the value of an attribute from a, a resource in the template. And then just some CLI commands you should know, you should know the create stack command, because sometimes they'll have a question and they'll actually show you um, some CLI commands and it's good to know what's what. Then you have the update stack one. Uh, and the last thing I want to just talk about a serverless application model is an extension of the CloudFormation, uh, is uh, CloudFormation that lets you define service application. It doesn't get its own cheat sheet because there's just not enough information on it. Uh, there's a lot more stuff on CloudFormation, um, but like you're, if this is for the associates, uh, this is good enough. If you're going for the developer, uh, the DevOps Pro, this is like a six page cheat sheet. So there you go. Um, you know, hopefully this helps you on exam day.